Christmas holidays are over and uh, after doing the watercolor, the Christmas watercolor along, I'm really looking forward to using pencils again. Light ultramarine. And uh, you may hear some noise in the background because Europe is experiencing a heavy storm. And here in the Netherlands, it is quite, it's quite a storm. We have uh, code orange in a uh, couple of areas in the Netherlands. And um, the, some of the huge constructions to prevent storm surges coming from the sea up to the rivers these constructions are being closed right now so they are closing yeah some sort of artificial walls they are to uh, to prevent the storm surge creeping up the rivers and causing problems but we do, do have high waters, high tides here, uh, actually in the town where I live. People who are living uh, close to the river, to the large rivers here, they uh, were warned yesterday that they should prepare for uh, high tides and there are sandbags available and last night, my husband and I woke up in the middle of the night because of a wind we haven't heard in many, many years. Such a strong wind. It uh, sounded like a train, an approaching train. That's what it sounded like. I could hear the roof tiles move around, so... As soon as this storm is over, I will have to uh, investigate the roof to see if everything is uh, still on its place. So far it looks good, but um, I can see part of the roof here from, uh, from the Passion for Pencils uh, headquarters. But... Uh, Here's another one, cobalt blue, slightly darker than the ultramarine. So I'm quite tired, I have to say, because we had a very bad, bad night because of that storm. Not sleeping very well. And, uh, well. So 2018 here is starting uh, here with a storm and I've been thinking about uh, what uh, 2018 might uh, have in store for Passion for Pencils and I decided to keep it simple, no big plans. But uh, finishing what I started, a wat the watercolor along project with the 12 drawings, I'm going to finish that and launch it. And there will be... Uh, I really liked the Christmas project, so I'm sure I will do something like that again. Maybe this time for a colored pencil. And 
and I am planning on doing a giveaway. I still have my set of erogeton pencils here. I have two of the same sets of 30 pencils. So I want to give away the set that I bought myself. The other one was a gift, so I'd like to keep that one. And then I have a lot of stuff that I would like to test for you and make reviews. Like uh, Carandash Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons. This leaf needs a lot more color light chrome yellow. Let's add a touch of pink. Pink Meadow Lake. There is so much that I still need to be need to color here in this drawing. So let's continue. Payne's Gray. I absolutely love, love, love colored pencil. It um, has always felt like the techniques that you need for colored pencil. They seem to come quite naturally for me. But there is a downside to the color pencil. And that is that it is, it is great for small detailed work. But with larger drawings, you know, it takes so much time to get the layering right and the detail and um, that is actually a re the reason that I was I started looking for a different something else, another medium. And I found two other mediums that I absolutely love. One is soft pastels. I have um, the beautiful soft pastels uh, crayons. And I have a beautiful set of pastel pencils, the Derwent pastels, and they work faster.
the other medium that I uh, have been exploring for years is watercolor. And um, together with the water brushes, I think watercolor is my favorite medium to take with me uh, abroad when I'm on vacation. I always take colored pencils with me as well. But you know, just sitting in the mountains and making a little sketch of what you see of the landscape I love doing that with uh, watercolor. Now those sketches, those plein air sketches are not uh, of great quality. I am more, uh, I think I'm more a studio artist, just sitting quietly taking all the time I need no rush, no hurry What I'm doing right now is adding this paint gray to uh, eventually make the leaves here in the forefront stand out a little bit more. And here I have dark Naples ochre. This is all polychromos, what I'm using right now. I have so many different pencil brands right now that this is... Um, it's sometimes difficult to choose which pencils I want to use. But currently I have here uh, my Polychromos on the table together with Luminance, Pablo, Procolor and um, Prismacolor Premiere. And I also have a couple of uh, of 
my old set of the brown gel pencils. You don't see me using them that often anymore. And, um, you know, I love, 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 love these pencils. They were the first set that I bought and they gave me great, great joy. But I have so many good quality pencils right now that, uh, yeah. Let's go for a slightly warmer tone, cadmium orange. I also have a couple of uh, erogeton pencils here. Not all of them. I'm coloring in my uh, in the living room right now. And that is because last night my husband had his uh, weekly sports night, so he was out and I took uh, a lot of my coloring equipment downstairs and um, enjoyed a couple of hours of happy coloring. That was nice. These uh, polychromos pencils, I think you can see what happens here. They are absolutely fantastic for, lay fantastic for layering. They make these slightly transparent layers and allow the colors that are underneath to shine through Now the process of this glazing technique, layering these very thin translucent layers of color, it takes a long, long time to get it right. But it is so rewarding. And this way of thin glazing, I think the polychromos do extremely well. And that is actually the reason that I bought them, because my Brunzeel pencils can do this also. And that is what I like them, about them so much. Now let's throw in a little bit of a light green sometimes I want bolder colors more stronger colors and then I can turn to uh, the Carandash pencils both Pablo and Luminance, Luminance. but um, Prismacolor Premier is uh, bolder as well, I think. I think that's a, that has everything to do with the softness of the pencil. And when I want more detail or an extreme subtle touch, then I would go for my harder pencils the Erogeton and uh, Pro Color. They work great for detail. And the Polychromos do work great for detail as well. Oh, 
I'm going for a slightly darker green now. Grass green. And I think I will have to do a little bit of sharpening. I've heard that, um, you know, when the adult coloring started, started people found it uh, a little bit stupid. And especially the claims that it would calm you down and be beneficial for your, uh, at least your mental health. That was all... Uh, They thought it was that wasn't true. It was stupid. But now I have read reports that psychologists are actually um, recommending coloring because it is so good for your brain, and it actually does calm people down, give them more sense of contentment, I think. That's good. I'm happy to hear that. And here I have burnt ochre. And again, I need to do some sharpening. The more layers you put on paper, the more saturated the paper becomes and the more difficult it becomes to get a new layer of color on the paper, so... Sharper points then can really, really help. But I really feel that the paper is becoming quite saturated, and you know what that means. That means that uh, we are approaching the finish line. Now, that is, it doesn't mean that I will be uh, finished the next hour, but it does mean that um, I will probably be able to finish it this year. <laughs> this is Derwent Pro Color Grass Green. I thought, why not try? A little bit of pro color here in the book and I think you can immediately see that um, it is a harder pencil and therefore the color comes out more subtle now I will add a permanent green olive by polychromos and here you can see the difference there is a lot more color coming out of the polychromos pencils people are starting to ask me what do you think of the pro colors well it's too early to say 
you know, you really need to get to know your art materials and use them for a couple of months before you really discover their power and their weaknesses. So, and I can tell you, every pencil brand has a, a strength and a weakness somewhere. Here is a deep cadmium. And I'm also discovering that many, many pencils need, need a, a friend. They need a companion to work best, to make. It's almost like, like a perfect marriage, you know? Foliage. For example, Polychromos works great together with Luminance. Luminance is so strong, exceptionally vibrant, but for real detailed work, you need, you need another pencil. And Polychromos is doing great combined with Luminance, I think. There is another happy marriage that I discovered, and that is erogeton pencils. They go great together with Prismacolor Premieres. And I am convinced that uh, these uh, Pro Colors, they have a best friend too somewhere. So I'm going to find out which pencil brand that could be. This is Deep Cobalt Green. If you already discovered it, let me know. Then I can try your ideas. Now, I don't have all the pencil brands in the world, but I do have quite a lot right now. So I can, uh, I can make a couple of matches and test them. It also depends on the paper and stuff, so. We have these little butterflies here. This is pink meadow lake. Just a very soft, quite warm pink. I've done this before in this uh, particular drawing, but I'll show you a little bit about the happy marriage between Luminance and Polychromos. So the Germans and the French and the Swiss. Spring green. I hope you can see it, but um, the Luminance pencil is really adding vibrancy to the drawing. Somebody uh, placed a comment asking, what, uh, what am I doing with my finished drawings? Well, the drawings that are in, uh, in a coloring book, I keep them 
in my coloring books and I do nothing with them. I can't do anything with them, you know. It's all about, um, it's not my own work, so. At least uh, the design isn't. But because I do love using artwork for different uh, purposes, I'm really moving towards doing... This is uh, grass green. I really want to do more of my own artwork so I will be able to, uh, to do more with that art. Maybe printing postcards, planners, calendars, doing more tutorials that you can join me in with my own work. I will have to do some uh, sharpening. I think here you can clearly see the strength of um, luminance. Now when I would use only luminance pencils this drawing would look bolder, but because with the uh, polychromos already being there, there is a there is this slight subtlety, sketchiness that I like a lot. Now let's add a Pro Color Delft Blue. Delft is a city in the Netherlands where in the 1600s they decided to copy China, blue, the China the pottery that came from China with the blue the blue images on it but there was a war in China so the production of the of it uh, you know the the cups and the plates and the production stagnated in China, so the Dutch being a very entrepreneurial, they thought, well, maybe we can make this stuff ourselves. So they started producing China with all sorts of drawings on it in blue about the Dutch windmills and wooden shoes and uh, people with this uh, folklore clothing and after you know 400 years they still are here the Delft Blue factory and they are uh, actually expanding they are doing more modern work as well now I think you can see just adding a little bit of this Delft blue here you can 
uh, create a little bit more depth to everything. So I'm pushing, pushing these leaves more into the background. And that is especially important over here because I want these other leaves to stand out a little bit more. We are slowly getting closer to the finish line. This is green gold. This is cold grey number four. And I think I'm going to add a touch of a more bluish green here. Let's see what that what that will do. about this one and then I can immediately do what I just learned a couple of days ago. You guys are teaching me how to speak English better and I really really appreciate um, your comments on my English because when I would read this, if, without, if I would pronounce this I would have said dark phthalo green but you guys explain to me that the PH should not pre be pronounced so it should be dark thalo green thank you very much then I start wondering what is the PH doing there well that's a different question so if anyone has the question has the answer so I think at some point somewhere in the world these two first letters were pronounced and now I'm actually starting to um, oh happy accident happy accident I don't know if you can already see what is happening here there is there is something happening here Anyway, I'm going to ask a professional artist who knows everything about colors how the Dutch pronounce this thalo blue. It's a blue pigment as far as I know. And I'm sure this guy knows where the pH comes from and whether it should be pronounced, at least in Dutch, or not.
I also get comments sometimes, especially on my earlier videos, that people say, can you please use us and all a little bit less? Well, at that point in my learning to speak English, I couldn't. I needed the us and alls to give myself time to think and to uh, yeah to think about how I sh I can say what I want to say it's slowly improving i think the us and alls are uh, not completely disappeared i don't think they will ever be completely disappeared but i'm improving If you've ever thought about learning a new language, I can really recommend it. It is... Um, it, it does more to, for you than only learning new words. It's hard to explain. You don't only gain more words, you, on, you also gain culture, I think. That's interesting. I've been watching videos by an American professional traveler, I think, Rick Steves. I accidentally came across his videos and this guy, I believe he is quite famous in the US. I'd never heard about him until I saw his videos. Luminance, permanent red. And I should sharpen again. That's better. I'm using a very light touch. So Rick Steves, he travels to Europe a lot and he writes traveling books and gives you tips about where to stay, where to eat, where to do your sightseeing and um, I think his videos are, I really like them. He comes across as a very friendly guy, he's open to new to the Euro European way of living. And, um, you know, Europe is uh, its not just one way of living. There are many cultures. The Italian way of living is completely different from uh, a Dutch way of living, for example. So, he, uh, in his videos, he shows you uh, beautiful places in Europe. Moss green, also luminance. But I think, um, I don't know if Rick Steves recommends this, but if you ever intend to have a vacation or visit parts of Europe, then I can highly recommend that you learn a little bit about the language that is spoken where you want to go because that will give you a much deeper experience I think about that country we went um, my husband and I we have been visiting the United States and Canada for a couple of times and if we were not we had not been able to speak English and read 
then that experience, although it would have been beautiful, would not have had a thorough impact that it had be just because we could speak the language. The same goes for a trip we made to Barcelona. Dark sap green this is. Barcelona, Spain. I, um, I, had, I did a, a course in Spanish, just a basic course of Spanish. And then we went to Barcelona and I could read just the signs that were standing in the street. I could read the posters on the concert hall um, and that gives you so much more. I could read the headlines in the paper that could that gave you so much more information about the country you are you are in and this was just basic spain as ba basic spanish i have to admit my spanish right now is terrible um, because i never used it after those trips the trip to barcelona so i forgot most of it but it really added something very valuable, I think, to, uh, to that trip to, to Spain. All of yellow. Same goes for the trip the last summer. Last summer we were in Switzerland. We were staying in an area where one village they speak German and in the next village they speak French. Now my French isn't so good, but it was good enough to get by. And um, we could help, we could uh, manage to speak a little bit of German, we could understand that, so. And you get so much more from the culture and the people. You understand so much more if you speak a little bit of the language. So that's really what I would recommend. Take a crash course and uh, dive into the culture of the country you are going to visit. I have no idea where we, where we will end up next summer. I don't know. Grass green. Last year we uh, decided to let it, let the weather decide. So where well, the weather would be good, we, we would go. And luckily our intention of going to Switzerland coincided sided with beautiful weather there. So we were lucky. And uh, next year, uh, of this year, next summer, I have no idea where we will end up. Maybe we will travel along with uh, family members for a couple of days or a week. But that all depends on where they will be going. But our first trip ahead will be winter sports to Austria. And I really hope that this extensive snowfall is, will stop and that the situation in the Alps will stabilize because it is very unstable and very dangerous right now in many areas. A lot of avalanches. Lawine Gefahr in German. And you know, avalanches do not only happen in the highest mountain ranges. Last year in Italy there was a terrible disaster in the, in the mountains, but not the highest mountains of the country. 
but an avalanche occurred, occurred and it uh, wiped away a complete hotel. So, I really hope things will stabilize. Now, this is it for now. We are slowly getting there, yes, yes. I think I will have to schedule a lot of hours of happy coloring this year. Yeah. So, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.